This was the truth. First, it was four noble truths that burst upon him, four truths which are intertwined within Buddhism. The first truth is that we all suffer. That's the first truth. We all suffer. Suffer, we can never escape the reality that suffering is part of the human journey. We all suffer. Okay, point one. It's a four-point sermon. What do you think the second point of the sermon was? The second point was that the reason we suffer is Tana. Wow. The reason we suffer is Tana. What does Tana mean? Tana is wrong desire. Point one, we all suffer. Point two, the reason we suffer is wrong desire. Some time ago I was out. I like to go jogging early in the morning, running regularly. I like to go out about 5.30 in the morning when I'm home. And um, on one occasion, I neglected to inform my wife when I was going out to jog. I always tried to inform her. One, one day I neglected to do that. And when I got home, she was actually out in the woods and she was crying because uh, I had gone, she didn't know when I left and I seemed to have been gone longer than I usually am. And she had this imagination that perhaps something had happened to me. I might have fallen over something there in the woods. And she was there in the woods and she was crying. She was, I was so sorry that I caused her that dismay. Now, why was she suffering that way? Well, the Buddhist would say, because she loves you too much. You know, if she had right desire, neither loving me too much or too little, she'd say, well, David's a bit late today. And I don't know what happened to him, but what does it really matter? He might show up, might not show up. You know, that would be the right desire, right tana. And that's, that's, that's the Buddhist message, that the reason we suffer is because of excessive desire. We love each other too much, love our loved one too much, or love our work too much, or love our house too much, you know, or just love to live too much. That uh, it's wrong desire, it's wrong tana that causes us to suffer. Right tana brings the cessation of suffering. So then the challenge is this, how will I acquire right desire? How can that happen? And they're in that park, he was in a park, sitting under, under this bow tree. It came clear to him, just as clear as could be, that there's eight basic principles we need to follow in order to acquire right desire. So what could those eight qualities be? Have you ever studied Buddhism? No. Okay, so this is your first course in Buddhism. Listen carefully. The eight principles which you need to follow to acquire right desire according to Buddhism. First, right belief. Secondly, right aspiration. Thirdly, right speech. Right speech. Watch your tongue. Fourth, right conduct. Number five, right livelihood. Make your living in a right way. Six, right endeavor. Right endeavor. Put forth your energies in a right way. Seventh, right mindfulness. Keep your mind thinking rightly. And eighth, right meditation. Learn to meditate. That is to think, to reflect, to ponder right meditation. Let me repeat them again. These are the eightfold principles you need to follow in order to acquire right tana. First, right belief right aspiration, that means right goals, right speech, right conduct, 
right livelihood, right endeavor, right mindfulness, and right meditation. Buddha was so impressed by this reality that had burst upon his soul that he left the bow tree and went to a nearby park, Benares Deer Park. It's where there is deer kept, Benares. He went to the park and he found five ascetics, five Hindu ascetics who were seeking enlightenment through asceticism. And he meets them and he says, I have become enlightened. I understand the solution to the problem of suffering. And so he gathers them around him and he preaches his first sermon, four point sermon. We all suffer. Secondly, wrong desire causes suffering. Third, Right desire brings an end to suffering. Therefore, to bring an end to suffering, we need to practice the Eightfold Path, which will give us the right desire, right belief, and right aspiration, and right speech, and right conduct, right livelihood, right endeavor, right mindfulness, and right meditation. That was his sermon. And all five of these monks were convinced. Oh, wow, this is simple. This is the way. And so they joined in Buddha then, on a preaching vocation of declaring this reality to their friends and relatives and people in the park and then people beyond the park. And before long, they're going out in twos uh, here and there in different parts of the country, different parts of the region, proclaiming this insight of the path to find a cessation of suffering. In fact, a rhythm got set up pretty early on where during the rainy season, they would spend their time in a monastery meditating and reflecting on these eightfold points of right desire, of, uh, of cultivating right desire. And then when the rains are over, the dry season has come, they would go out by twos or threes or so forth in small groups and go from village to village teaching this insight from Buddha. Uh, this is the way to escape from suffering. So that's the essence of Buddhism. I mean, if you meet a Buddhist in Japan or you meet him in Kursk, Russia, and you ask them what do they believe, it would be uh, this fourfold sermon that they would share with you. The reality of suffering, uh, the wrong desire causes it, so the right desire brings an end to it, and then the eightfold path to acquire, a, to acquire a release from suffering. That's the essence of Buddhism. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.